for Florida State in terms of the ACC tournament that comes up next week. We will talk about that, but there are some scenarios that might play out for them to get a six seed instead of a seven seed, but they will not finish below seventh. Tip goes out of bounds. Looks like some confusion here on the tip, so we might redo it, and indeed we will. The tip is controlled by Tania Latson, the sophomore sensation for Florida State, averaging 21 and a half points per game. Clinton in this zone, gonna try to slow the drive down, but you see Virginia there already. She has a, the ability to have her own little hot streak, so we'll see how she plays today in her last game here at Florida State. Final game inside the tuck for Sarah Bajetti. She was honored pregame in the jersey ceremony she is certainly capable of having big games. She has had big ones in big moments. Station at Harris, the point guard for Clemson with the ball. Gets to the elbow and lets it fly. It's off the mark and the rebound in the hands of Latson. Florida State plays with so much pace, Helen. And the open floor blocking foul called against Harris. How do you go about trying to slow this team down? Well, I think it starts with uh, Tania Latson. You have to meet her at half court. You see there the that Harris didn't meet her until the top of the key, and by then it's too late. Their, their goal today is to make Tania Ladson go to plan B and plan C if they can. She's so strong going downhill. Ladson way too strong on that three. Kayla Elmore helped up to her feet by her teammates. Well, I mentioned the Knowles, 80 points per game, top of the conference, but they also allow quite a few points per game. 72 points per game that ranks last in the ACC. We talked to head coach Brooke Wyckoff before the game and she had said that the defense obviously has been a point of emphasis, but it's also how they play. Ruby Whitehorn left wide open there. The sophomore to Detroit, Michigan. 12 a game. Whitehorn has elevated her game in her second year, especially on the rebound game. Averaging five rebounds a game. First points of the game for Tania Latson. Coming off an 18 point performance in the loss to Louisville. She has scored 30 or more points in six games this season, which is tied only with Liz Kitley. Certainly no sophomore slump for her. Been very consistent for Florida State this year. Maddie Ott, top of the key three. Off the back iron, loose ball into the hands of Snoop Turnage. The goal you don't want a wide open three, but certainly you don't want the ball to get inside to Mari Robinson. So you see a lot of people trying to, you know, dig down and make things a little bit difficult for them to get the ball to her in the post. Latson with a little hesitation now takes it down the lane and lays it up with the left hand. I would argue that there are very few players in this country that are better at finishing through contact than Tania Latson. Well, and she came into the ACC, as you see her get the steal here, ready to play against that contact as a freshman. Turnage, corner three. Yeah! A hot start for Florida State on senior day at home. A 7-0 run prompts a timeout from Clemson head coach Amanda Butler. Well, Turnage, that's her 16th three of the year. Doesn't shoot a whole lot, but at 30%. Saw her practicing that earlier today in shoot around and then right before the game, so she's confident in that shot. Nice extra pass there, good catch. Good form. She has struggled from beyond the arc this year, has Snoop Turnage. 15 for 50 coming into this game. That was her 16th made three of the year, but she does so much for this team that doesn't show up in the stat sheet, too. Well, for her, we talked with Coach Wyckoff today. Her job is to rebound, get in there and rebound. She's averaging, I think, six rebounds a game, but uh, finding a way to elevate her role, whatever that is, and if you can get points from her, then that's a bonus for Florida State. So a 7-0 run and a timeout for Clemson. Now, if you're in Clemson's huddle, you're Amanda Butler. What are you trying to tell her team here? Well, first of all, you, uh, like I said earlier, you've got to stop whoever has the ball. And most of the time, that's Latson. You've got to get to her at half court. But that requires a lot of communication because in defensive transition, you don't have the person that you normally have in half court. So there has to be a lot of talking. Whoever is closest to her has to slow her down. The record for the Clemson Tigers might not accurately reflect uh, some of the progress that has been made on this team this year. Their first eight games, Helen, in ACC play for Clemson 
were against teams who were at or above 500 in conference play at the time. And six of those eight teams were also ranked in the top 25. So, uh, look, I mean, it, yes, they are 5-12 and 12 in the ACC, but uh, they played some tough competition. They played some tough, tough competition and then having to work through some injuries as well. Yep. thought they'd have some players, you know, at the beginning of the year, and then they had players really, um, you know, effective for them on offense, on offense that they don't have here toward the end of the year. So they really struggled with that, trying to put together a consistent lineup. And that contributed, I think, to, to some of what you're talking about. Matty Kluse, one of those players who essentially missed the second half of the season for Clemson. They are without Mackenzie Kramer, a sharpshooter and a transfer from Lehigh today. She has not played since February 4th. And when you don't have a shooter outside, that's not going to open up the opportunities for Amari Robinson to have one-on-one. -on -one. So they've had a little bit better contribution like they did uh, the other night. Uh, against Wake Forest from some shooters from the outside, which gave Robinson a little bit more room to work, and that's why they had such a good game. The Florida State starting four of five from the floor. Four points for Latson, that three from Turnage. The lone points for Clemson coming off a jumper from Ruby Whitehorn. The full timeout called early on. You get the feeling, too, that Amanda Butler wants some time to settle her team down and get things right. Well, and, and she's playing a matchup zone, but they've been able to penetrate that off the drive. That's definitely something you do not want. So maybe shoring up what she wants from her team in that, if she decides to stay in that, so I think it's a tough matchup if you're, trying, if you're gonna go player to player against Florida State. Clemson using all of that minute timeout. See here also in that timeout, having a set play. They usually try to get it into Robinson, but if they don't have her, you know, they'll try to free Harris off some screens and then Whitehorn as well off the lob. So those are their three options in that order. Harris. No good. Turnage wanted it over the back. It's last touched by Robinson. It will be Florida State basketball. Harris missed that shot, but she's been such a dynamic point guard for Clemson this year, able to give them whatever they need, whether it's a score or facilitate. Oh, that was halfway down. There's K.K. Timpson fighting for the rebound. K.K. Timpson with uh, some records that could be broken here today. Nice feed from Bajetti and a better block, though, from Ruby Whitehorn. Whitehorn with those long arms. She's so athletic, covers so much space. Open three, Michaela Elmore, and a foul off the ball as Amari Robinson hit the deck. Elmore 6'2", six, six but her strength is she wants to shoot that three-pointer, hit five for seven against Wake Forest the other night. Now you see Inyang come in. A little bit more physicality for Clemson in the post. First foul against KK Timpson. Eno Inyang has checked into the game, a homecoming for Eno. Hails from St. Cloud, Florida, just outside of Orlando. And she'll play the post here, and you'll see Robinson will move outside. As you see, Whitehorn there, nice drive, just so smooth, covers so much space. Tucked the ball in there like a running back down the lane. All four points for Clemson from Ruby Whitehorn as Timpson gets a friendly roll. KK hey. Timpson, the junior from Edison, Georgia. The reigning ACC most improved player last year is well on her way to a first team all ACC nod this year. She needs a double double to reach 16 for the season. And that would be a new single season record breaking Natasha Howard's of 15 double doubles in a single season. Another kid that people don't talk about enough. Take away there. All the time, but KK Pinson is very important to Florida State. Aria Gordon trying to feed it. Timpson with the reverse. First points of the game for KK Timpson. Florida State five of the last seven from the field. And there's a mismatch there for sure. And that's a three second violation on Inyang there. Yeah, a little bit too much. She had the shot. She's taking it there. You see who they call OMG penetrating. <laughs> Into the paint for Timpson. I love Omaria Gordon. Just tiny pint size, but very powerful, very effective. Can shoot from three, 
handles the basketball, gives Florida State a lot of options. Good trap here from Clemson, but a reach in. I think that's going against Danielle Rausch. And indeed it is her first. It was set up well though. They got him right on the end line there, on the sideline, I should say. Great story for Danielle Roush as well. Spent four years at Michigan before coming over to Clemson last year, but didn't play. She was a grad assistant. Still had an extra year of eligibility. And Coach Amanda Butler said, hey, you could use a uh, backup point guard. There she is with the ball. Yeah, and a pretty good shooter as well. Four points coming from Ruby Whitehorn in this game. Enyang can make them from that spot, and she does there. I know Enyang. Yeah, her stats don't, I don't think they're reflective of her skill set. She certainly can give Clinton more. Yeah, she was another one of those players that missed some time with injury this year. Alexis Tucker with the basketball, the transfer from UC Santa Barbara, one of the two seniors honored prior to the game today. Pajetti, the other kick. Into the corner, three, Bonner, no good. Robinson with the rebound. There's a mismatch there with Ying Yang. They need to look at her. Whitehorn coming off the screen, and it's good. Ruby Whitehorn's feeling it today. It's a perfect three for three from the field. I, I love her confident body language this year. Last year as a freshman, not quite sure, just sort of going along with things, but this year very purposeful, very intentional, as you see KK Pinson get the opportunity to go to the free throw line. Uh, Whitehorn, I think, next year, this is gonna be her team. So her improvement is gonna be very crucial for Clemson. Gatorade Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American, Ruby Whitehorn, she was also the highest ranked recruit in program history at a Detroit, Michigan. Been working on expanding her range, but right now, she has six of her team's eight points and we'll get a breather on the bench. Timpson makes the first of two. Talk about what she has meant to this team. We, we were talking to Coach Wyckoff too. KK Timpson has kind of gone under the radar a little bit. When you talk about bigs in the ACC, we kind of talk a lot about Liz Kitley and rightfully so, but right. KK Timpson, I mean, she's gonna average a double-double this year. She's just been the epitome of consistency for Florida State. They know they can count on her for that double-double. Plays good defense, good communicator. Robinson's three off the mark, and there's Alexis Tucker elevating. 5'11", combo guard pushing the floor now. And they're happy to get her back, need her for her defense. OMG, shot is short. And a jump ball possession arrow to Clemson. Kayla Elmore will check back into the game for Amari Robinson. Coach Wyckoff going early with some players off the bench here. Treadwell and Viegas in the game as well for Florida State. Nia Valentine checking in for Clemson too. So both teams using their bench early on in this one. Roush, the triple is good. Danielle Roush. It's her 13th made three of the year. Treadwell, the offensive rebound, the putback no good. Dacia Harris looking to push. Roush, transition three is good. Not too shabby for a grad assistant. Not too shabby at all. She also played a huge role in Michigan's Elite Eight run a couple of years ago, but Amaria Gordon with the answer on the other end. The free throw line jumper is good. Three-point basketball game. Clemson has climbed back in this thing. Well, two possessions for Florida State in zone, and Roush hit two three-pointers. Roush! Oh, she was feeling it. A little heat check and an offensive board. Inyang! Offensive foul though, hard contact made against Treadwell. Slow to her feet. <laughs> 
Jan, Mike, thank you very much. A very exciting one down there in Miami, an overtime win for Georgia Tech. We are here, still in the state of Florida, up in Tallahassee, Florida State, and Clemson. Wrapping up the regular season in ACC women's basketball alongside Helen Williams, I'm Sam Ravage. Florida State got out to a big lead early on. It prompted a timeout from Amanda Butler. And Danielle Rausch has almost single-handedly brought Clemson back in this thing. Yes, hit, hit two three-pointers against that zone of Florida State. But Florida State still able this whole, whole quarter to be able to penetrate against that zone. They've been able to get into the paint and either get free throws or score. White at the free throw line. Makes the first. Florida State has already used 10 players in this game alone. Two for two for White. Lead back up to five for the Knowles. Harris steps into a three and drills it. She's added an offensive element that Clemson didn't have last year at the point guard position, whether it's on the drive or the three. Dacianette Harris second on this team with 14 points per game. Latson's three is well off the mark as well. That's now two three-point attempts in a row that have missed the rim for Tania Latson. Latson, one of the top scorers in the ACC. She's got four points in this one for Florida State. Harris looking for contact, didn't get it. Second chance, though, for the Tigers. I mentioned rebounding, too, Helen. A couple of offensive rebounds for Clemson. And Harris, two for two from beyond the arc, and Clemson has taken a one-point lead. They've been get, able to get second opportunities a few times here, and this resulted in threes for them. First lead of the game for the Tigers is Lexon down the lane, and an offensive foul. Feet were there, and set for Dejanette Harris. And just a nice job coming up. Nobody stepped up on Harris off that screen. Miscommunication on that double pick there. And then the contact here, lowering the shoulder there of Latson. Harris coming up big on both ends of the floor for Clemson. Seminoles led 13 to four in the early going. It was a nine point lead. That has been reversed. Well, and partly because they've been able to score and get back and set up their defense. At the beginning of the quarter, they were allowing Florida State to get those rebounds and they could run. They couldn't stop them going downhill. Eight on the shot clock, Whitehorn, that's her spot. And she hits it, Ruby Whitehorn, leading scorer for this Clemson team so far. She's got eight and an 8-0 run for Clemson on the road. When you score, you can get back, you can set up your defense, you have better communication. You see here, it's a matchup zone that it'll look like player to player because it'll switch on the screens. Shot clock is off, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. And a three from Pajetti is no good. Out of bounds with 2.2 seconds left in the first. Florida State one for six from long range here in the first quarter. But that's their game. I mean, it's either threes or layups and they're not gonna stop shooting those. Harris, the half-court heave over the backcourt. What a comeback here in this first quarter for the Clemson Tigers. An 8-0 run to finish. Five of their last seven from the floor, and they lead it. And they want those first four spots. You get that double by, you get a little bit of rest. So every game is really important. Florida State was one for six from three-point land in the first quarter. As that one drops for Amaria Gordon. It's a good start for Florida State, who went a little bit cold towards the back half of the first quarter. And they come back and they switch to their player-to-player -player defense. Robinson fouled on the way back up. She will go to the line for two. All right, so we saw these standings there. There's a couple scenarios to consider here when it comes to the ACC tournament that starts in Greensboro next week. Florida State entered today tied for sixth in the ACC with Duke. Both 11 and six in the conference. Now, Duke and North Carolina are playing simultaneous to us over on ESPN right now. If Duke loses to North Carolina and Florida State wins, 
Seminoles would secure the sixth seed in the tournament in Greensboro. Now, if Duke wins, the Knolls lose, of course, then Duke would remain the sixth seed. Now, Florida State cannot finish any worse than seventh. But regardless, the top four teams that finish in the ACC standings receive the double bye to the quarterfinals. Florida State, regardless of the outcome here, will get a first round bye. Clemson, on the other hand, will have to play day one. Latson, long jumper. Jump shot's been a bit off for Tania Latson here. She's two for seven from the field. Well, Clemson doing a much better job in that zone of not allowing any pen penetration into the paint. Making a big difference for Florida State, forcing them to take outside shots. Ruby Whitehorn had a great opening quarter. Eight points for the Tigers. Roush hit two threes as well. Harris calls for the screen. Two to shoot. Harris elevating, no good. Another second chance coming. Robinson looks injured on the play. Hmm. Well, Harrison's gotten some good looks at the basket. They haven't fallen. But she continues to penetrate and get into the paint. Time is called here as Mari Robinson will head to the bench and get checked out by the training staff. Take another look at this, Helen. She got mm. poked in the eye yeah. by a turnage just forcing to play in the game. Well, I'll say this, Mari Robinson has been the heart and soul of this Clemson team and really this program over the last four years. Grad student has scored over 1,800 points in her illustrious Clemson career, and she's having a career year this year. 17 and a half points per game for Mari Robinson. You see there getting checked out after she took a uh, hand to the face. Also six and a half rebounds that leads the team. So she does a lot for this Clemson squad. Latson on the dribble drive, down the lane and it's stripped away. Quick hands from Dejanette Harris. A couple of really quick guards here in Harris and Sarah Bajetti. Oh, this is a good matchup. Bajetti's the best defender on Florida State. Another good matchup with Whitehorn and Latson. Whitehorn elevates. Rouch, she's already hit two and she's hit a third. Danielle Rouch is feeling it from long range this afternoon. Well, and that's what happened here in that the beginning of the fourth, uh, second quarter. The, the long rebounds, the second chance opportunities, and Rouch is three for four from three point range, along with Harris is two for two. So that's really what you know got them that lead here in the quarter. Foul on the open floor committed by Tania Latson. A nice hand here, able to keep the balance and get the ball back in. And then the long, the rebound and the opportunity there for the three-point shot. Second chance opportunities for Clemson, which they did not take advantage of earlier in the season. Ten second chance points for Clemson, just two for Florida State here in this one. Monty Freeman has checked into the game for Clemson for the first time as well. Number 34 in orange. Harris behind the back. Waved off in a travel was called. A lot of contact that Harris uh, incurred on the other end of that. I'm dating myself here, but it looks like Flintstone feet <laughs> going <laughs> to the basket. Here's Robinson right back into the game after getting poked in the eye. Mari Robinson, two points, already six rebounds. Maria Gordon bumped off the ball by Roush. Yeah, fortunate there, because Robinson turned a little too quickly on that screen. That's where Florida State, they want to attack those two guards at the top of the zone and then go from there and isolate the middle of that zone if they can. Simpson off the inbound. That's no good. Scoring drought of two minutes and 45 seconds for Florida State to start the second quarter. Well, 
Nice crossover. Harris can't get it to go, and Pajetti looking to push. Two on two, Pajetti into the corner. Three, Bonner. Knowles over the last four now. And Florida State's making Clemson work for their shots. They've been patient and taking good shots in their half-court offense. And you got to figure, too, a slower pace would probably favor Clemson in this one. No doubt. No doubt. They want to slow it down and take their time and take good shots. Tough shot for Whitehorn. Jump ball. It's going to stay with the Tigers here. day at home here for Florida State. Seminoles 11 and 6 in the conference. They've already reached the 10 win mark in ACC play for the ninth straight season. Sustained success here in Tallahassee is a turnover there for Whitehorn. Yeah, and they're out of bounds for Clemson. You're always going to see them either get the ball to Ruby Whitehorn initially or to Amari Robinson. If Amari Robinson doesn't get it first, they're going to try to get it to her on their second option. So we'll watch for that here in the game. The sixth turnover for Clemson. Gordon, hesitation, fouled by Elmore on the floor. Shot will not count. She's so low to the ground there. Listed at five foot four, Helen. That might be generous. She's so effective for them, just having a great year this year for, for them, just being consistent. Can shoot the three, can drive, really good facilitator. Well, Gordon might be a front runner for the ACC's most improved player this year. She's almost doubled her scoring average. And a turnover back the other way now. Whitehorn from the wing. Off to the right. And into the hands of Tucker. Pajetti making a move. Layup no good. Loose ball out of bounds. Stay with Florida State. Maddie Ock comes back into the game. Clemson, they've got to get back. When they miss those shots, you can see Florida State. They're going to push the pace as much as they can. They average 76 possessions a game, so they want to get a lot of shots off. 80 points, too, off of those 76 possessions. Pajetti, a long three, and it's good. Sarah Pajetti on senior day drops the three. Coming off a Excellent performance as well. A couple of weeks ago, she played a huge role in Florida State's win over Virginia Tech in January. And she started out struggling points. earlier in the year with a three-point shot, but you know, like you said, toward the latter part of the year, she's going to shoot now. It doesn't matter if she's making them or not. She's going to continue to shoot. Went 0 for 7 on Thursday against Louisville. See, Florida State, if they're going to take those three-pointers, they've got to go after the ball. They didn't really crash the basket that time. How important is the three-point shot going to be for Florida State if they want to have success in March, Helen? Well, it's key to them because they have options. They either want to get a layup or they want to crash the boards and kick it out for a three-pointer. They don't really play in that mid-range area, so they need to be hitting those. Well, we mentioned Bajetti was a bit cold on Thursday night, went 0 for 7, but drops down the three on senior day here. Inside the tuck. Clemson, though, with a four-point lead on the road. It's 29-25 with four and a half to go in the second. All right, welcome back. Take a look at our bracketology with our good friend Charlie Cream as we are on the final day of the regular season. The ACC projected to have nine teams in. That is tied for the most in the field right now with the SEC. Again, these are just projections. And Florida State has been a uh, regular contributor in, in March. And you see their resume here, 44 in the net. They're projected as a seven seed right now by Charlie Cream heading into today. Now, they do trail by four right now. That would certainly change some things if this score were to hold. But Florida State, Helen, is looking to have some better success uh, in the month of March, this go around. They have not won a game in the NCAA tournament in their last three trips. Two first round exits, a first four loss in 2022. 
They were upset by uh, Tennessee, Georgia last season. But wh what do you make of this iteration of Florida State, and, and how can they cause problems in March this go around? Well, certainly they've been tested with the gauntlet of the ACC yep. conference, but they have to have contributions, consistent contributions from the perimeter for the way that they play their game, and they have to rebound better. You have to have Bajetti having a consistent you know, game from three-point range where she shoots pretty well, and then obviously Gordon as well. And then she hasn't played yet, but Viega is, is a really good three-point shooter for them too. So when they shoot well, that means KK Tension has lots of room to operate and lots of room to roam around and rebound. And that's what it's going to take for them. This is the largest lead of the game for Clemson at six points, 31-25. Four minutes to play in the first half. Harris, short on the three. Tucker with the rebound. And that's the other thing. They've got to rebound so that they can run. That's exactly what they want to do, but you can't run if you don't rebound. That means you're limiting Clemson to their second chance points, and you're getting opportunities to score. Michaela Elmore swatting that away. Out of bounds going to be Florida State basketball. It looked like they started the inbounds play before Snoop Turnage got the ball there. So a long inbounds to Gordon. OMG driving. A lot of contact there. No whistle. Shot off the mark. Florida State is one of their last ten from the field, Helen. And they've been good shots. It's not like they've taken terrible shots, you know, at the basket. Robinson posting up on Timpson. And there is K.K. Timpson with her 79th block of the season. That is 20 more than Liz Kitley in second place in the conference. Well, you're not going to be able to go one-on-one -on -one against her in there. She's got long arms, and she times her jumps really well. Now, I guess you don't have to rebound if you block shots like K.K. <laughs> Timpson does. As Pajetti gets fouled down the lane, she'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, so Florida State trying to solve this zone by Clemson. Oh, what you see here. Yeah, you, you get stuck <laughs> like that. It's, it's not happening. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they've been struggling against this half-court zone because the guards up top switch. So they think it's player to player, which essentially it is. But trying to figure out how to get into the paint from that. They've been really struggling with that here in this second quarter. But Jetty, five points on the afternoon and she makes the first all right with the acc tournament just a week and a half away our last regular season tuesday doubleheader is going to be really big seven eastern number nine north carolina hosting notre dame and then georgia tech squaring off against wake forest right here on the acc network and the espn app clemson's lead down to four I think Florida State has done is in not allowing Amari Robinson to get inside any any opportunity, and that's you know, Clemson struggling that, that when they have to go in their half court set. Turnage transition three short from the corner. Florida State again two for 20 in the loss to Louisville on Thursday night as Amaria Gordon uh, nearly coming away with a steal somehow. Hustle. It's not a backcourt violation. Tiptoe in there, the mid court line. But Florida State is two for 20 from long range Thursday. They are gotten out to a three for 12 start here in this one. Yeah. Three to shoot for Ruby Whitehorn. Tough drive there. And if you're not shooting well, then you got to depend on your defense so that you can at least get opportunities in transition. Great job there, Valentine, cutting off the angle for Bagetti, but she got it again. Ooh. She has driven right probably six or seven times, and no one has stopped her from the initial drive there. They step up, but she's getting to the line. Now you saw Coach Amanda Butler on the sidelines get down the, in a three-point stance there, trying to explain to Dejanette Harris how we <laughs> try to stay with Sarah Bajetti and Maria Gordon. But well, These I, I thought, are quick. Yeah, I thought Valentine did a great job initially of not letting her go right, and then she let her get in there, and that means everybody else has to help. Well, the scoring has slowed down here in the second quarter. 
that's obviously an advantage to Clemson. They do want to slow this game down. They don't want Florida State to start running, but they do have to get the basketball into Amari Robinson if they're going to play half court. Both these teams combined shooting four for 25 from the field. That's 16% here in the second frame. As Whitehorn's fadeaway jumper's too strong. Last touch by Robinson. Will be Florida State ball. It's been a while since Clemson's had a wide open shot. A few minutes here. He had Roush hitting those shots and they were getting second, second chance opportunities. Not so much here at the end of the second quarter. So while it hasn't been pretty for Florida State, they've managed to stay in this game. What was once a six point lead for Clemson has gone down to two. Another three off the mark. It's now three for 13 from three point land. I kind of wonder at what point do you, does Florida State try to get KK Timson more involved in this game? That's a walking double-double for the Knowles down low. You know, that's a, that's a good point. Sometimes it's almost like she's an ancillary yeah. <laughs> uh, part of the offense, just sort of her offense is getting the rebounds and misses of everyone else. You rarely see them, you know, run set plays for her to get her inside. Six points for KK Timpson, two for five from the field. Again, we mentioned her uh, potential for breaking records here today. If you can get a double-double, it would be the most in a single season in program history at 16. What a baseline drive! Amaria oh, Gordon with an OMG type of play right there. Uh, and you think about it, it's all the more impressive that Timkins gets her double-double because they don't run the offense through her. Tie ball game, 30 left to play in the first half here in Tallahassee. Whitehorn on Tucker. Whitehorn goes left, looking for help. Kick out to Harris. Harris, step back three. No good enough fight for the rebound. Bodies on the floor. Out of bounds, Clemson basketball. Turnage wanted a tip. I'd be surprised if you see a lob here for, for Whitehorn. Shot clock is off. 10 seconds left in the second quarter. Whitehorn with the basketball. Whitehorn, hesitation, that's a carry. Ah, she had the jumper there off the dribble. That just looked like a second guess there. Yeah, just right, right there. She just pulled up right there and... Mm. Three to shoot. Amaria Gordon with the ball. Gordon. Floats it up, and it's good! OMG! Oh, oh, basket is under review. For Clemson, keep an eye on 33 and Orange as this one progresses. And let's keep an eye, you didn't really see much from Latson there. She yep. wasn't able to get the ball in her hands and get downhill. There's a. There's probably the first design <laughs> play. We were just talking we about seen. her not for, having for KK Timpson. And that's... You know, she's athletic, she can move. I think they should feature her a little bit more in their offense. Timpson with eight now in the game as Florida State gets the scoring started here in the third. Boy, it's tough when Bajetti's guarding you. You're not gonna get, she gets over those screens on the ball. Jumper falls for Michaela oh. Elmore, who was coming off a season high 17 points against Wake Forest, hit five threes in that game and went six for eight from the field. It's been a bit quiet here this afternoon, though. That's now four points for Elmore. Gordon, nice hesitation. Just couldn't finish. And a late foul on the floor. Going to get against Station Ed Harris. It's going to be her second. Yeah, and you see Florida State spreading out the defense on the perimeter so that they can drive. Trying to block out Timpson there. That's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard. Especially if you're not her height either. Florida State's been cold from deep. Three for 14 here in the game. And again, they made two threes in the game against Louisville in that 15-point loss. They were two for 20, so. Yeah, and, and the three-pointers that they've had are just like that when they're contested. They haven't really had wide-open threes. 
Harris working on Gordon. Good has, help there. Has to pull it back out with five on the shot clock. Great defense from Amaria Gordon. Oh, but she commits the foul. Gordon was all up in Harris's business there and ended up committing the foul at the end. Look at her getting over the top of that screen. Most players are, are lazy. They don't want to do that. But she and Bajetti do a great job of getting over the top of those screens on the ball. It's very unfortunate that she got that foul at the end. Harris will shoot three at the strike, makes the first. Station at Harris has been a great story over the last several years in this conference. Started her career at Pitt, where she played all four years there. So dangerous off the bounce. She's fifth in the conference in assists. She's uh, bumped up the scoring this year as well. About 13 and a half points per game. And yeah, she, she's had to do that for Clemson, but you, you love her game because she will give Clemson whatever they need. If they need a drive, if they need a pass, if they need a three-pointer, she's capable of doing all of that. And a travel is called. Tonight, Latson has been held in check here tonight. Four points, two for seven from the field. Well, it feels like Clemson is her kryptonite. She was also held in check in their first meeting, relatively. 15 points in that, uh, in that close win up at Clemson a couple of weeks ago. Well, you have to get the ball into her hands so that she can get downhill, and when you don't rebound well and get an outlet to her, very difficult when they have to play half-court offense for Florida State. She can't get downhill as well as she does on the break. Of course, Latson, the 2023 Rookie of the Year in the ACC last year. Oh, oh another swat from Timpson. But there to put it right back is Whitehorn. That's the second block of the game. KK Timson. She did a great job of staying with her on the switch there. Sarah Bajetti kicks it out to Latson. Latson on the dribble drive, lays it up and in with the left, and let's see if that will get her started. Well, that's one way you can get her to go on downhill. If you just change sides of the floor, get the ball to her on the reversal, she can get downhill because the defense is still shifting. Latson led the league in scoring last year, putting up 21 a game. She's still putting up 21 a game this year. Timson commits the foul there. That's her second. So Harris will head back to the strike where she just went three for three. All right, the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament begins Wednesday at Greensboro Coliseum with every matchup but the championship game right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Our first round coverage begins 12.30 Eastern time with the Nothing But Net crew. I will be camped out on my couch all week long <laughs> You and me week. both. Uh, <laughs> don't call me, don't email me. <laughs> That is, it, it, there are always fireworks at the ACC tournament, and there's always an unexpected team in there that makes a run as well. Timpson with a friendly roll here at home. KK now in double figures with 10 points. Well, it's good for them to isolate her on that elbow because she has Inyang on her and she can drive around her, but that time she decided to take the jumper. Down to a one point lead for the Tigers. Harris adjusts in midair. Count the basket and the foul. So Harris did her best invitation of Latson just getting downhill, getting to the basket and taking the contact. She has been the offense for Clemson. 15 points now for Harris, albeit she's just three for 12 from the field, but seven for seven from the free throw line here this afternoon. She just has a good sense of when she needs to continue to go downhill or to pull up. She also had Clemson's first 10-point, 10 10-assist 10 double-double since 2007 earlier this year. She just does it all for this team. Clemson back to that zone. They're struggling to open up the middle for Florida State, struggling to get to that point. Out of bounds, Florida State ball. Danielle Roush will come back into the game. A reminder, Roush three for four from beyond the arc. Clemson has made five threes in this game, three of them coming from 33 in orange. 
Latson fading away in the paint. Kyle Latson with four points already here in this third quarter. Ties what she had in the entire first half. Get her an opportunity to get an easy shot, see the ball go through the basket. Harris caught in midair, finds Robinson. And Oinyang baseline J is good. Back to a four point lead. Clemson shooting at 42% from the field. On the season, it's about where they are, 43%. Nice pass. Good feed, Timpson, count it. Again, you see the reversal there. You got the defense shifting and they can get downhill. Somebody has to help and Timpson is the recipient of a great pass. An opportunity for the end one. Off the mark on the end one opportunity for Timpson. Whitehorn looking to push. And the Tigers will slow it up. 45-43, five and a half to go here in the third quarter. Final regular season game in the ACC for both of these teams. Harris snipes through a couple of defenders. Robinson's there for the putback. Robinson able to get to that spot because they had to help on the drive, even with the almost turnover. It's the ninth offensive rebound in this game. That was halfway down to Latson. Up the floor, tipped by Robinson, and Roush with the finish. And a timeout is called by Brooke Wyckoff for Florida State. The lead back up to six for Clemson. That matches the game high for the Tigers. They're getting it done on the road here. 5.07 left to go here in the third quarter. Right now, Florida State sits at six. So they would get a bye into the second round. Clemson would play on day one. But uh, we were saying it earlier, Helen, it feels like every year there's a surprise team. Every year there's a surprise uh, upset. And it all starts this week. All coverage on the ACC Network and ESPN as White gets fouled on the putback there. But Florida uh, State coming out in a, uh, still trying to get drive downhill to the basket for Virginia, but you're right, just, it's always an exciting time at the end of the year because it doesn't matter what your year was like. Everybody's 0-0 and they all still have one game. All right, we'll step aside once again, a quick break, 49-43, under five to go in third. in the ESPN app. You remember two years ago, it was Miami as a seven seed that made it to the championship game before eventually falling to NC State. Last year, Virginia, Virginia Tech took it. 75-67 over four seed Louisville. Who will the uh, surprise team be this year? Kind of like what, I mean, you gotta like what Virginia Tech has done all season long, Helen, but this is a very deep league. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to, you got Louisville, you got Duke. Right. I mean, you just, you, you just don't know. You, you expect, obviously, NC State and Virginia Tech to be there, but, um, you know, there could be some, prize, some surprises there. And don't, don't just count North Carolina. They're, little, they're up and down sometimes, but do not discount them. We got a five-point basketball game here inside the tuck in Tallahassee. Helen Williams, Sam Ravitch on hand with you. Oceanette Harris missing the layup. She's four, three for 14 from the field, but she's leading the team with 16 points because she has gone a perfect eight for eight from the free throw line as Bajetti right into the chest of Harris and an offensive foul is called on Bajetti. Yeah, let's see if she, she did that shoulder a little bit. Yeah. And trying to initiate that contact there. See, Harris has been able to get downhill off these screens, and Florida State has been forced to try to help. And she's either gotten to the line or gotten the ball to one of her teammates. We'll talk about experienced guard play. Dacianette Harris and Sarah Bacchetti have been going head-to-head -head against each other for four straight years here in this conference, and they know each other very well. Whitehorn takes it left. Back out to Robinson now. Out to the wing, Naya Valentine for three. Valentine's been impressive for Clemson this year off the bench as a backup point guard. 
Yeah, I don't really talk about her. It doesn't take a whole lot of shots, but she definitely is somebody that can give them some offense off the bench. It's a steal for Amari Robinson as Latson tried to get it down low to White. Back the other way, Harris leaves it. Valentine, corner three. That's no good. Back the other way. Here comes Amaria Gordon. Extra pass into the corner three is good. Yeah, we saw her taking that shot earlier today before the game. That's their offense. Get the rebound, penetrate, kick it out, get the three. First make for Viegas in this game. Also her first take from the field. Florida State could certainly use a couple extra threes to fall. Harris creating space for herself there, just pushing Amaria Gordon off the ball. And again, making a good decision, pulling up there at mid-range this time instead of going all the way. Harris has got 18 points to lead all scores. Latson. So not really an inside presence for Florida State, so they're not going to get a whole lot of second chance opportunities at the basket. And a foul underneath against Amari Robinson. Off ball foul, and Robinson will pick up her second personal. A physical basketball game. Both sides. You see Coach Butler giving the clock inside. Tip out of bounds, and it's going to be going back the other way. Latson deflected it off of Harris. Will be Florida State ball on the sideline. Well, the defense has been a concern for Florida State this year. It was a point of emphasis that we talked about with Coach Wyckoff. They are last in the league. They allow 72 points per game on average, does Florida State. But Coach Wyckoff had made the point that you know, part of that is just because of the style that they play. Yeah, when you have that many possessions and you try to score that much, you're kind of sort of going to have to give up something. But the one thing you don't want to do in that style of play is give second chance opportunities to the other team. You can. If you're going to outscore them, that's fine. But when you give them second chance opportunities, it makes it difficult because you have to try to get back in transition too many times. To your point, Clemson 14 second chance points. Florida State has eight. Six on the shot clock. Robinson will try and connect. Hit the triple. Amari Robinson now with seven points. It's been a relatively quiet night for the leading scorer for the Tigers. She averages... Just over 17 points per game this year. Uh, and that's just knowing your personnel. When they have another player in there like Elmore, you can, they're going to move Robinson out to the perimeter, and she can shoot those threes. I think she's shooting 37% from there. That was a tough pass for Amaria Gordon to reset for the shot, able to convert and answer on the other end. Back to a five-point Clemson lead. Every time Florida State makes a move, Clemson does something, and they absorb that hit. Still up by five. You got to figure they're going to have to get some stops on this end, though. They're going to have to get some stops and, you know, try to apply some more pressure full court, I think, as they get an opportunity there with the turnover. Yeah, nice recovery there by Omaria Gordon. When they've made Clemson spend time in the half court, that's where they've benefited. They don't want to do that too much. Like you said, they're trying to run, but when they give them opportunities to get downhill and they don't have to set up their plays, it's where they struggle. That's why they're down by, by five. Florida State's got two players in double figures right now. That would be Timpson with 14 to lead the way, and there she is missing the shot in front of the rim. Maria Gordon with 12. Clemson's got three players with 10 or more points. Oceanhead Harris leads the way with 18. Whitehorn has 10. Danielle Rouse with 11. Whitehorn on the dribble drive. That's their play. They love to get Whitehorn and Dacian at Harris off that high ball screen. Yeah, just doing a good job there changing the size of the floor. That was beautiful execution. You don't see Florida State crashing the boards. When you're behind, you see crashing the boards a little bit more because then you give opportunities like that downhill for Clemson. And that's where Florida State has struggled. You don't see anybody crashing the offensive boards for them. Nine-point lead. It's the largest of the game for the Clemson Tigers, who 
Look, quite frankly, they're coming off one of their biggest wins of the season on the road at Wake Forest on Thursday as Laxon gets fouled on the drive. Whenever Timson takes that shot, nobody else is crashing the boards, and that gives Harris an opportunity. She spent a whole lot of time on that right side driving today. That's her spot going right. Harris now with 20 points in this game. As Tamaya Latson will head to the stripe for two as Roush checks back in. The one area that Tania Latson has struggled with this year that she did not struggle with last year is shooting the basketball, specifically shooting it from long range. She shot at 36% from beyond the arc last year. That's dropped 10 percentage points to 26% this year. But to her credit, she hasn't taken as many threes as she did last year. And, and she's improved in every other aspect exactly. of her game. So you know, that's one thing where she decided to focus on something else during the summer. Three to shoot here at the end of the third quarter. Latson half court heave. Off to the left and Clemson with a pretty sizable lead. 61-53 as we go to the fourth here. The second chance points favor Clemson 14 to eight, Helen. Well, and they are not, I said off camera, I'd like to have some technical terms to tell you, yep. but it's just want to. They're not aggressive going after offensive rebounds. They're not aggressive boxing out. Clemson has been aggressive on both ends of the floor. As you see Whitehorn there coming out of the timeout, getting to the basket. Florida State has not been aggressive crashing the boards. And I think they need to do that. I think they need to put some pressure, full court pressure, so they can get to the point where they're playing their game when they're running and they're getting fast break points. How about that, too? Tania Latson starts the fourth quarter on the bench. Offensive foul, Elmore sets the feet. Yeah, they just haven't been able to get her. I think they did a good job in the first quarter of not letting her, picking her up early and not letting her get into a groove getting downhill. And from there, Florida State struggled. Started missing outside shots, couldn't hit threes, and it just sort of snowballed from there, but compounding it by not being aggressive and allowing Clemson to get those offensive rebounds. Oh, what a crossover from Whitehorn. A lot of contact, no foul. Time on the clock still. And a timeout called by head coach Amanda Butler. The largest lead of the game for the Tigers. 63-53, 9.08 to go here in the fourth quarter inside the tuck. Helen. Yeah, and just making really good decisions. Just great command of the change of pace dribble, taking the contact and reading the defense, making the right play at the right time. There you see her hit the mid-range shot and then just a little pull up, just a little slow change of pace and Clemson not doing, I mean, uh, Florida State not doing a good job of communicating when she gets past her defender and she spent all of her time with the exception of that one shot we saw on the left side. Everything's been going right for her and, and they've allowed that to happen. There it is, off the high ball screen, the handoff. Fight for the rebound there. That's what you were talking about, Helen. Just the, the sheer fight and determination to get second chances. Harris again, crossover, layup, no good. And that's a push on Whitehorn. Saw Lexus Tucker elevate for that board. Um, Florida State here has got to set some screens for Lats and then let her do her thing. Change sides of the floor. She's been, she was successful in the first half and they changed sides of the floor and she was able to get downhill. 10 point lead is the largest of the game. You remember Florida State led this one in the first quarter 13 to four. But Jetty's floater is off the mark and Whitehorn reels it in. They, with the exception of the first couple of possessions in the first quarter, Clemson's done a really good job of keeping Florida State from getting to the penetrating that zone. Doing a lot of switching and talking. And they've really struggled with their half-court offense. 
really when you look at it, the pace of the offense, the, the, the way that the Clemson players are cutting hard, going to the basket, you don't really see that from Florida State. But Jetty will head to the bench. Maya Bonner, the transfer from Cal, will come back into the game. A nice play. The floater up for Whitehorn. Back to Robinson. Off to the left, but there's Roush. Gets her own miss and puts it back up and in. But even though that was an air ball, it was still basically a second chance opportunity for Clemson. Danielle Roush with 13 points, but the answer with Latson on the other end. We need some more of that. We haven't seen as many transition points as we normally do for Florida State. They only have three fast break points. Yeah, they have not put any pressure on the defense of Clemson in transition. And partly it's because Clemson's been making shots and they've been able to get back and set up. But that's what they're good at, is, is stressing defenses in transition. Good ball movement there. And Bonner. Latson in the open floor and a blocking foul. It's going to go against Dacianette Harris. That's her third. Back to the free throw line for Tania Latson. She's one for two this afternoon. Let's see if they put any pressure off the free throw here. You know, Latson's ACC freshman scoring record was just eclipsed by Notre Dame's Hannah Hidalgo. Talk about some of the young players in this conference over the last couple of years. Latson and Hidalgo. And it's been impressive. Now the league and really women's basketball is in yes. good hands with the freshman class this year. Juju Watkins out west at USC. So Florida State's in a zone here. There's Whitehorn crashing the old boards once again. And there's where she's really involved, you know, in the second year. So it's obviously a great great score, but she's really been intentional about getting on the boards for Clemson this season. Double-double now with 14 points and 11 rebounds. Nice Good play. feed. Robinson finishes on the low block. Mari Robinson up to 16 points. Or excuse me, now with nine. Whitehorn affected that shot. Gordon will let it fly. Five for 19 from beyond the arc. 26% for Florida State in this game. Still a 10-point lead. Clemson is in no rush right now. And that's why I think Florida State should put more pressure on them. There's five minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. And, and you're down by 10. Falls into the hands of Amaria Gordon. It's one on four. OMG does not care. There's what I mean. That was pressure on the defense there in the fast break. So it's it's a matchup zone, but you see there the sort of a, a tandem here. If you're not careful, it looks like a 1-3-1, one, one, but it's a tandem 2-3, and it's keep them out of the middle. They get it in there to Robinson. Bounce pass Whitehorn. And her shot's no good, but there's Robinson again. Nice job there holding off Timpson. Perfect pass. And then OMG here. Nice little stutter step or throws the defense there. Nice layup. OMG 14 points. Latson now up to 13. Again, she had four points in the first half, did Latson. <laughs> and Maria Gordon. And the one thing with this Florida State team is they do have guards that can literally take over a game. They do, and now they switch back to their player-to-player -player defense after that. So let's see what Clemson does with that. Crowd getting into it here at the top, a six-point game with four and a half to go. 
Roush is calling for it in the corner. Harris gets an open lane. And it's blocked. KK Simpson's got three. Simpson did a good, did a good job there helping off of that double screen. Turnage. Too strong. Again, nobody rebounding. Clemson is out rebounding Florida State 42 to 28. When you're behind, I mean you've got to you've got to put more pressure. You've got to try to get a second opportunity for your team. You do not see Florida State doing that. Roush has already hit three today. And there's Timson with the defensive rebound and the crowd appreciative of it. Let's see what Latson does. Nice hesitation and straight to the rim. Down to a four-point game. The last couple of possessions went to player-to-player -player defense. Did a good job not allowing Clemson to get more than one opportunity at the basket. A 6-0 mini run for Florida State with three and a half to go. They have cut the deficit to four. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed again. A bit of a mini run here from Amaria Gordon and Tania Latson getting it, it done in the open floor, Helen. Yeah, they changed their defense with player to player, and they were able to limit Clemson and see the block there to just one opportunities. And again, this is when they're at their best. They're getting opportunities to go downhill and drive to the basket. And I believe their last three baskets have been layups, and it started with their defense. Now on the other side, Clemson has gone a little bit cold. One of their last seven from the field and a scoring drought of nearly three minutes. So where does Clemson go to get this offense back going, Helen? Uh, I think you still always start with Robinson. You know, put her and Harris together, as you see here, and let them operate. If you can get a pick and pop with Robinson off the uh, screen on ball. Here's Harris on the drive. Timpson affected it, but there's Robinson again, fighting for the offensive rebound. And Amari Robinson now with 12 boards. And that's 14 offensive rebounds for Clemson. Timpson coming over to help. When she comes over, that frees Robinson up for the offensive rebound. Robinson will go to the line to shoot two. She's got nine points. So that is a double-double now for Amari Robinson, who, by the way, surprisingly, has only had one other double-double this season. And it came early on in ACC play against Georgia Tech in January. So final day of the regular season, and Amari Robinson picking up her second double-double. And I said they needed to get her more involved, but it hasn't been featuring her. It's, it's her playing off of Harrison. Drive it to the basket. Latson loses it. Last touch by Clemson, though. Looks Harris like the right call. Sell it. <laughs> yeah, looks like the right call. And they're gonna 30 second timeout called by Florida State and Book Wyckoff. 68-63 is the score. Rebounding has been a big topic here in this game. I, I, I gotta ask you, Helen, how do you how do you teach rebounding? Like, what's what's a couple of tips? Um, the best thing is to recruit people who will do it. That you so, start so with it that. So like a natural thing it, that you look for as a coach. It is, but I mean, you can have situations in practice where you have competitions where you you know, get points for rebound. I mean, you talk about it ad nauseum with your team every year. It's just, every team has a problem with that, and it really is just one thing. You've got to have five kids on the floor who have a sense that that's, you know, it's another possession that we can get. I mean, you have drills and everything, but it really is just one, two. Off the inbound of the baseline, Amaria Gordon with a quick shot there. Yeah, I, I thought they should have gotten the ball into the paint, whether they were in zone or player to player. That was the quick shot. Roush got tripped up there. Yep. Latson got the leg out. That's also the fourth foul on Tania Latson. 15 points, two rebounds, four assists for Latson, and four personal fouls. 
Florida State's going to have to shore up their defense if they expect to go far in the ACC tournament next week. They've got to do a better job than what they're doing today. You can always just have Harris involved with Robinson, and then you just play from there. Harris lost it for a moment, finds Valentine, corner three, count it! Naya Valentine with a massive three, her second of the game. She just comes in, doesn't play a lot, but she hits big shots for Clemson. Let's see if Florida State can answer. That's a whistle underneath. Whitehorn called for it. That's a great weapon to have coming off the bench for Clemson. Sarah Bajetti with nine points will come back into the game, playing in her final regular season home game here inside the tuck. And you're against well, the Florida State only had two bench points. Right now, they only have six. And Clemson have 21 bench points. We mentioned at the top of our show, Florida State had just two bench points in the loss to Louisville on Thursday. Still plenty of time here. Six-point ball game. Got to get a stop. Whitehorn coming off that shallow screen. Now spins, leaves it short, and a huge rebound for Snoop Turnage. Back the other way now, Latson picks up the dribble. Bonner will try for three. And correct! Maya Bonner's first make of the game couldn't have come in a bigger spot. Minute and a half to go. Clemson by three, and the crowd getting into it. Gotta keep Harris from going right. Whitehorn calling for Harris to come off the screen. Kick out Valentine, puts it on the deck. Gets Latson in the air. The shot is short. Florida State ball, here we go. Minute to go. Pajetti for three. Oh, we are tied! 71-71. It's the defense. But Jetty ties it on senior night. Clemson's got one timeout left. Florida State's got two. Foul in trouble, not a concern for either side. Just three team fouls as Whitehorn has it blocked. Takes it back up. Loose ball picked up by Latson. Florida State in control. Shot clock is off. Here goes Latson. Offensive foul is called on Tanaya Latson. I was just going to say, I, it's good that they didn't call a timeout. She should go to the basket, but I think they're going to take a look at this. Well, Clemson and their coaching staff trying to have some words with the officiating crew. Well, you do, you do want them to get it right, and I think that was the right move on Florida State because that's what they do. They, they go to the basket in transition. Some people might have thought they should call timeout, but I don't think so. So what do you think? I, I think they're looking, I mean, to see if she extended that arm. Maybe that's why they called it. No, she didn't. Oh, man. Oh, the call on the floor was an offensive foul on Tania Latson. And by the way, that's her fifth. I mean, you don't, you don't have to be, you just have to be between your player and the basket. It's not like you have to, you can't move. But that would be the question is whether or not she initiated that contact. This is a big call. The understatement of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Clemson basketball here with 19.1 to go in a tie ball game. So Florida State's going to have to put that call aside whether they like it or not and try to defend here. Yeah, there's certainly no need to foul. 
That was just the fourth team foul on Florida State. So neither team is really close to the bonus here. So you're Amanda Butler, Helen. What were you drawing up in that huddle? I wouldn't be surprised to see a lob to, um, to well, no, Whitehorn's taking the ball out, so that's a no-brainer. Get the ball into Harrison, let her go to the basket. It's been working the entire game. No need to change from that now. I got to imagine, too, that head coach Brooke Wyckoff for Florida State was telling her team, hit the glass hard. Well, and you want to switch everything here. Whitehorn taking it out. Pajetti slipped, but back to her feet. Shot clock is off, 15 seconds to go in a tie ball game here inside the top. You gotta step up on this screen here. You can't not play that if Spaghetti doesn't get over the top. Dejanette Harris down the lane, picks it up, puts it up, and it's no good. We have overtime here at Florida State, 71-71. Four quarters, not enough. Florida State. The only player with four fouls for Clemson is Eno Inyang. She is on the bench. So where do you get the offense from Florida State here in the second in the, in the half court? That's the question for them. Clemson's in pretty good shape for the people that they have. Valentine was able to save it. I think she thought she might go back court there off the tip. So Clemson will start here in this overtime session. Final day of the regular season in ACC women's basketball. Robinson taking it right into Snoop Turnage. No good in Pajetti with the rebound. Pass is getting down the floor, putting pressure on the defense. Nice pick by Harris. Loose ball and what a wrestling match for it. Turnage and Harris. I cannot wow. say enough about that kid. That's the second time she dove on the floor for a ball. She plays so hard. She's asking for a foul here. Stop it, Jenny Fowler. Just a tough, tough player. Not going to question the heart of Dejanette Harris. I mean, she will lay it on the line. That was a full extension on a hardwood basketball floor. You can see why Coach Butler really wanted her to come over from Pitt. Gordon calling for the screen. Turnage will try. Too strong. See, that's the problem that Florida State has. If they are able to get into the paint and they kick it out, there's, it's Gordon that's kicking the ball out, and she's the best shooter, and she's not able to kick it out to the jetty. Look oh. Out. oh, miscommunication. Harris and Valentine not on the same page, and it leads to a turnover. That's the 13th of the game for Clemson, and it could prove costly. Yeah, so you see Brooke Wyckoff taking Turnage out here, getting in a better shooter for them, playing in out Alexis Tucker. Good ball movement there. Kick out Bajetti for three. Yes! Sarah Bajetti had a huge three in the latter part of the fourth quarter to tie up the game at 71-71. Yeah, just a smart play there, getting the ball in the middle of the zone and, and kicking it out to a shooter on the weak side. Great execution there by Florida State. Let's see if Harris has an answer. Tucker got a hand in there. Now Robinson on the drive. Double team coming. Empty possession there for Clemson. Under three and a half to go here in overtime. Again, no Tania Latson for Florida State. She has fouled out in this game. Sarah Bajetti has four fouls. KK Timpson looking in the paint. Leaves it short. Still have Florida State here in their player to player defense. I still want the ball in Harris's hands going downhill. Harris has 20 points. Splits a couple of defenders, loses the dribble into the hands of Bajetti. One on two, Sarah Bajetti draws the contact. Look at her. See how fast she gets down the floor <laughs> with the ball. Just so much speed with the ball, somebody was going to foul her. Just, Look at that. Elmore in an unfortunate position there having to defend that. And then OMG just falls right out. Senior day, got to give you a hug. Thanks for getting the foul. <laughs>
So Pajetti, a chance for two. Almost halfway down. She was a perfect four for four from the strike before that miss. Two possession ball game now. Move, going baseline, gets Bonner in the air. And I think they're going to call it on the floor here. Well, that was just a great move. You've got Harris on the bench now, so you go to Ruby Whitehorn. It's another offensive player that can get to the basket off the dribble. Slight little hook there. Okay, so they do count the basket. And an and one opportunity for Whitehorn. That was halfway down. A couple of missed free throws on both sides. Very fortunate there. You don't want to get, ever get an offensive rebound on a free throw. Florida State by two. 2.20 to play in overtime. Tucker thought about going baseline. Instead kicks it back out. But Jetty, a logo three. I'm not sure that's the shot you want, Helen. No, that middle was open. That works for them. You get the ball to the middle and then kick it to a shooter. That's one of those shots that if it goes in, it's great. If not, you should have done something else. A little bit different dynamic here. Now you have Ruby Whitehorn, who's the person who gets downhill because you have Harris on the bench. And that's a technical foul. I believe they're going to call it on both sides. Whitehorn was going at it with Amaya Bonner after the make. And I think those will be offsetting technicals there. Right, so a double technical foul. Those will offset, and it should be Florida State basketball. But a tie ball game now, 75-75. Things getting heated. Yeah, I mean, I, my personal opinion, there was no need for that. They were just, you know, going at it. But I mean, nobody touched anybody, and I mean, I guess the. You know, the foundation of the rule, I, I guess that's why they did it, but I, I really didn't see a whole lot there. It is certainly something that uh, the officials have been focused on cleaning up in the game. Any sort of extracurricular activity that goes on. I think that probably was a, a definition of it. So what has worked for them is getting the ball at the free throw line area in this zone and then uh, operating from there. Bajetti taking it herself, and she gets fouled on the way up. Two free throws coming for Sarah Bajetti. So the help is late there by Whitehorn. Just got to step in there and take that charge. That's the fifth personal foul on Ruby Whitehorn, so she has fouled out with 18 points and 14 rebounds. I mean, this was a career game for Ruby Whitehorn today. Michaela Elmore also has four fouls and four Clemson. Tania Latson has been on the bench since the start of this overtime period with five fouls. So you literally have five three-point shooters in the game for Clemson, even though you have Amari Robinson and, and Elmore in there at the post. So if you let any penetration happen, it's not going to be good news for you because they can kick it out the field. Both sides in the bonus now as well, so we'll be shooting free throws for the next minute 38. And Bajetti makes both. That's a senior making some senior shots. Clemson led by as many as 12 in this game. Robinson, oh, a strong take to tie it up once again. That's something she's added to her game this year. She didn't do that a lot last year, but driving from the perimeter at that high post has been really good for her this year. 12 points, 12 boards for Robinson. 
Back and forth we go. One minute remaining. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Bonner will try. Leaves it short. Now Clemson a chance to get in front. Got to get over these screens on the wall. He's got to have help. Harris has not scored in this overtime period. Stuck on 20 points. Robinson, a three. Bonner with the rebound. But she had the drive there again to the left. And Coach Wyckoff wants a timeout here. And yeah, that's a good timeout because Clemson made the adjustment and would not allow them to get the ball to the middle of that zone. So we're going to have to make some changes here. Just about a five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. No fouls to give on either side. Florida State used one of their extra timeouts. They got an overtime, so they are back down to two. Clemson has one. Foul trouble on both sides as well. Tania Latson has fouled out. So, too, has Ruby Whitehorn for Clemson. Either team, if it's me, I'm going to the basket because I know I can get to the free throw line because they don't have any fouls to give. So if you're Florida State, you know, they've been doing it on the perimeter. You've got to change sides of the floor. If Majetti's been successful driving to the basket, you change sides of the floor. If you're Clemson, you know, you have Harris going downhill. So either way, I'm trying to get to the free throw line. Florida State with four players in double figures. Clemson with four players in double figures as well. This has been a back and forth battle on the final day of the regular season before the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament starts next week in Greensboro. We will have, of course, all of the coverage on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. So if you have enjoyed what you have seen here this afternoon and this evening, I guarantee you, you will like what you see next week in Greensboro. Well, I got to give Florida State some credit because I've just been on them as a coach. <laughs> Tell them they weren't playing hard enough, there wasn't enough one to, and they certainly have changed that. So kudos to them. Yeah. Well, this is how we got here, Helen. And Florida State, again, trailed by 12 in this game, but a late fourth quarter surge, and they finished the game in regulation on an 8-0 run. Yeah, and it was, it was their defense. They limited Clemson, and they were able to get downhill. They got some fouls, got to the free throw line. It was 71-71 at the end of regulation. Both teams have scored six points in the extra session. It is 77-77. I mean, can you ask for anything better on the last day of the regular season, Helen? No, it's, you know, it's that's what happens in basketball. You're They're playing for seeding. They're playing for pride. They want to make sure that it's in seniors outright. And Clemson just doing a, a great yeah. job. You know, from the very, they had a couple of droughts here in the game, but just did a tremendous job of putting pressure on Florida State's defense and getting to the free throw line. And I can't say enough about Dejanette Harris. He, she carried them for a long time in this game. And we also mentioned some of the seeding scenarios that could play out here for Florida State. They needed some help, and they got it. If Duke lost to North Carolina today, which they did, 63-59, Florida State would be able to secure the sixth seed with a win here today. Of course, that is for the ACC tournament coming up next week, as we mentioned. Five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, all tied 77-77. Aria Gordon, a lot of dribbling here. Five pick, and Timpson who lays it up and in. Just a great job of having press. It looked like there was nothing there, but able to get to the middle, into the paint, and they had to help left Timpson wide open. I mean, she made something out of nothing here, Helen. Yeah, there was there was absolutely nothing there, and Timpson just making herself available. Clemson will use their final timeout. And it comes down to this. Can Florida State get a stop on the defensive end? It has been a pain point all year long. 
or will Clemson, with what has been one of their best offensive performances of the season, be able to win it or force a second overtime? I would put the ball in Harris's hands because she makes really good decisions. And by the way, Dejanette Harris is eight for eight at the free throw line today. Timeout advances the ball. Harris trying to get open. Gets the ball going to the rim. And she lays it in. We are tied again in Florida State. Calls a timeout to advance the ball themselves, but what a massive basket, and what a great design play, too, well, out of it, the timeout. Yeah, and it's not going to get a whole lot of, but the screen by Amari Robinson was tremendous to free her, to force Timpton to come out to help, and she beat her off the dribble. Ice cold from Dejanette Harris, who's now got a game-high 22 points. What's kind of amazing, though, is that she's only made six shots from the field. A lot of help from the free throw line, but a huge, huge shot for Dacian at Harris. We are tied again with 4.4 to go in overtime. Well, if you're Florida State again, you got to get downhill. You only got four seconds. Maybe somebody comes to help and you get Timson again, but you got to get downhill quickly. Try to get to the free throw line. And this is exactly the moment in the game where you would go to Tania Latson to go get you a bucket, but. She has fouled out five fouls before the overtime break. She's on the bench, they'll have to do it without her. No fouls to give on either side, both teams in the bonus. It's either gonna be Buschetti or, or Gordon, I think. Into the corner, Buschetti for three, short. And a timeout was called but Clemson doesn't have any timeouts left. I don't know who called the timeout. Yeah, that's this unfortunate. You, you want to, in that timeout that you have, remind your players whether you have them or not. I'm not sure who called it. Our officials are gathered here. This could be a problem if one of Clemson's players called the timeout. Yeah, our officials are over here talking to us. That, that's exactly what happened. Clemson called a timeout. They don't have any left. Florida State's going to shoot two free throws here, Helen. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I guess it was, was it Amari Robinson that called it. Uh, that's a tough break yeah, for Clemson. Yeah, really tough. Man. Two shots for MSU and And you know what? That, that's not the first time that we have seen it happen. Well, how about putting your senior on the line to win the game in her last home game? Sarah Bajetti has done so much for this program, and she has a chance to win it. And she was great at the beginning of that uh, overtime when they went and sat down. They showed her she was coaching the team, telling them what to do, and that they were going to win this five minutes. <laughs> Technical foul, two free throws, and she misses the first. Now, Florida State does get the basketball back as well with one second left. And she makes the second. Florida State with a one-point lead with one second left, and it is the... How about that? The senior hitting the shot. It will be the Seminoles basketball. I don't think anybody knows whose basketball it is right now. <laughs> Nobody's taking it out underneath. It should be Florida State basketball. It should, but the players are not. Okay, now oh, they know. Okay, now we figured it out. And a timeout is called. Coach Wyckoff not happy about it. What's she saying? Nobody's, nobody's looking or talking to me. What, what do you think she means by that? I'm not sure. I think she was... 
it looks like she's saying they didn't communicate the situation to them. That's the only thing I can think of. Because none of the play, literally none of the Florida State players right. knew that they were taking the ball out. So maybe that was part of the discussion. So on senior day, Sarah Bajetti misses the first, makes the second to break the tie, 80 to 79. It is Florida State basketball with one second remaining. You just need to get a hand on the ball and get the clock started. I have to imagine Clemson's gonna try for the steal. And certainly be aggressive on it too. There are no well, timeouts remaining for I was gonna say, you don't have any timeouts, but if you want to foul anyway before the ball comes in, either way, it's, it's a tough one with only one second left. Tucker gets it in, Timpson has the hold, and a whistle blows, point one on the game clock. And that all but seals the victory for Florida State here at home on senior day in the final game of the regular season. Wow. Well, they certainly struggled here and got themselves together and played hard and got some stops and were more aggressive on both ends of the floor. There'll be a lot to talk about in film about the about them waiting until the end of the second half to start playing, but they, they were able to get it done. And Timpson makes the first of two. I, I gotta say this, Helen, I can't help but feel for Clemson and for Amari Robinson because they were on the verge of winning their last two games on the road this season for what has not been an easy season for them. And a called timeout with no timeouts left resulted in a technical, and Florida State is able to win it at home. And a celebration ensues on senior day. What a game, Helen.